Welcome to Yukon and number 61. Today we're doing some work on our prospector. So we got a couple of things to do. One is to install these. These are the expedition lashing kit. So that expedition lashing kit will allow you to uh, lash in your gear. So if you tip over, it's not going to fall out. And I'm going to use my sanding block and some sanding uh, paper. I'm going to use just uh, LePage's contact cement. And uh, you get a double one here in the center, just under the center thwart. And they basically have D-rings. These are from Western Canoeing. They're not the vinyl type. They're kind of a soft plastic. But... Uh, they work well and they come with well, some mixing sticks there. They come with uh, lashing hardware to use a uh, webbing. And you put them up just where the chine starts. So you can see the back, the center, two at the center to go either way, and then one at the front. So uh, I'm going to mark them out with a pencil. And then uh, sand and glue these in and give them a good number of days. And uh, the other thing I'm going to do today is, uh, if I get the time, I'm going to bend this piece of aluminum and replace, this is the back thwart, replace this bracket that goes on with uh, two rivets with one that's slightly angled so that this will sit off at this kind of an angle so I can use that as a kneeling thwart and I'll have a high kneeling thwart there for soloing this boat. This is a 176 Prospector. It'll carry about a thousand pounds. This first strip I'll tuck slightly under this thwart and you can see I'll just do it where the transition is sand this area here. So I'll get with that. I got this little thing here as a sanding block. And you don't have to sand right through the material. You just have to put up so the glue's got a place to stick. Yeah, I'm just using uh, heavy duty contact cement. You could use epoxy. There's a vinyl glue that you, people use, especially for Royal X boats. But I don't want to eat through this I'm not exactly sure what this epoxy is, so it's safer to use something like this. I've also roughed up the back of these. And I've tried to keep my fingers off everything so I don't have oils. So you can see I've got one. I've got a double here. Because we're going to have straps going both ways there and across. And i got one here. I've used the front seat, the back of it, the center thwart, and the back thwart as my spots. And I've got two tubes of this because I don't want to run out. So that's that, and then we do the same thing to the other surface. And we especially pay attention to not doing the center because we don't want to glue those do ring D rings in. So go. Yeah, these ones in the sun on this side have dried already. These ones have not. It's funny. The the sun really seems to. I cannot reposition it. So I have to make sure I've got it in the right spot. Lashing kit. I'm going to tighten that up with the tri glides. And, uh, so, if anybody tells you that uh, contact cement works to put in these expedition kits, you can tell them it really doesn't. I just came out, just took them out with about 50 pounds, 50 to 75 pounds of pressure each. So I'll try epoxy. Now, of course, I've redoubled my job because I'm going to take the glue off of both of here and here. So I thought originally maybe it's just that the glue wouldn't stick to this plastic, but it did seem to stick to the plastic. It's sort of stuck to the... the fabric here, but not very well. So. I had a friend call the H2O and ask them what he should use. 
and they told him this. Now he used the vinyl ones. They have a little more footprint. Maybe they'll work better. But uh, I think I'm going to try two with uh, five minute epoxy first and see how that works. But first I'm going to take all this glue out of here. Hello, Greg. Yeah, it took me about an hour to get all the glue out everywhere. Uh, and now I'm just trying some five minute epoxy. The directions that came with this kit said two-part adhesive, so I don't know what they meant by that, and I don't feel like phoning them again because last time they didn't help me much. So I'll just try this five-minute epoxy, but I'll do it on one side because it took me a good hour to get all the <laughs> stuff out of there. <laughs> I had to take these to the sanding machine because actually the stuff stuck really well to that. I just don't think uh, the contact contact you know, the contact uh, cement is good for putting in uh, usually um, foam kneeling pads because you don't really put a lot of pressure on those. I think for something like this, I just don't think it's enough glue. Okay, so you're now doing your. Uh Using five minute epoxy. Five minute epoxy. And uh, the irony is this just might work. Well, it should work. So the epoxy is what uh, worked. And I don't see that it's caused any damage to the boat. It's just five minute epoxy. Yeah, so. This will be very handy. You can see that I've, uh, I've at least got one adjustable. And uh, one that I've tied in. Okay. Since not all of these straps are the same thickness and some of them don't work on this. I don't know why they did that, but that's how they did it. This thwart here is put on with an L-shaped bracket. And you can see it's designed to be go straight across. Uh, this would be a nice place, actually, to canoe the this uh, from Solo. And it's always nice to have a kneeling thwart, but you just put a little weight on that and most of the weight on your knees, but it's really handy to have these rotated a little bit. So I just made this bracket, and uh, so it's an L-shaped bracket, but it's got an angle here. So when I slip it in there to replace that, it's going to tip this a little bit to this side. So it's got a nice kind of a kneel to it. And I'll keep this thin piece, I really want to get fancy at some point I will replace this with one that does not have the nice contours but that'll add weight so I'll try it like this for a bit three inch one eighth this is one eighth thick three inch aluminum and uh, I bend it make a mark where you want the bend I bend it in this vise, but when you bend it in the vise, you get a rounded corner. So you want to have a fairly, as much as possible, you want to have a 90 degree angle that's sharp. And uh, without a bending machine, once I built, bent that round corner, I put it on the edge of the vise, or edge of the uh, anvil, with it bent, and I just hammer it to the sh to the right angle of the anvil. And then it's simply a case of using the hacksaw to cut it to these dimensions. And uh, it's a straight, it's a straight edged, it's a, it's a straight uh, bend as I can make. And then I get the, uh, I get the angle by cutting this off at an angle and button it up. So that gives me an angle. So this one, I just have to be careful, it has to be a mirror image. So I have to make sure that I don't make a mistake and, and uh, you know, make it the same. And I've also now I've got two of these. So at some point, I think I will put these in instead of those guys. 
and get this on at a slant. And this one is a mirror image. And it goes in on this one side. So, maybe it'll give me just a bit of slant on this while still holding it up. So, I'm liking that. Not sure I'll do it today, but I'm going to do it at some point. <laughs>